The history of growth hormone has been fascinating. We, we knew back with high level emergency workers that were responding to calls. I myself back in the early 80s was attached to the SWAT team. When we started running blood work on, on, on uh, um, emergency workers that were having heart attacks, we knew that the elevated cortisol levels would uh, suppress growth hormone. And we knew that over time, that's why cops and firemen and emergency workers or even war vets because of low hormonal levels had, had a lot of heart attacks. So when I became the director of research for a large pharmacy, we were di distributing millions of dollars worth of growth hormone to anti-aging centers. And I got to see in real time and look at lab work on how the growth hormone was affecting these people physiologically. Um, why didn't people respond to the growth hormone? And what I learned along the way was, I designed some lab work because we were trying to develop a long acting growth hormone. Instead of giving a shot every day, we would give it once a week. And, and I, I set the lab work up to track people that was using our long acting growth hormone. So what, what you could understand, folks, is that right around 2004 or 5, the perfect storm was a growth hormone, um, was being uh, touted as a performance enhancing drug. It's a natural producing hormone in our body. Uh, the baseball players are all using growth hormone and testosterone, so it's been vilified in the press. And what I saw at anti-aging centers and educating physicians because our pharmacy developed growth hormone was there's been 76,000 studies on growth hormone. It's almost, you know, as much as insulin. Um, it's been tested and we've studied acromegaly, people that are giants, and we studied growth hormone deficiency in children. In 1996, the FDA approved growth hormone for adults with growth hormone deficiencies. But a lot of the physicians right now are not up to speed on this. I think the resurgence of growth hormone injectable growth hormone because we're, we're looking at gels and, and other delivery systems out there right now that really don't work. We run, we run lab work on people. And again, everybody is biochemically unique, so everybody doesn't respond to the growth hormone the same way. And it's really a waste of money taking growth hormone if you don't optimize other metabolic systems in your body. And Doran, Doran, we had to develop a, a muscle wasting program uh, for people. We've got 8,000 people a day turning 65 for the next 20 years. These people are going to go into a state of muscle wasting, which is going to damage their bone and damage their heart. So when I took a deep dive into this, I looked at the two fields that I immersed myself in. As a triathlete for 20 years, I've studied endurance athletes and muscle wasting. As a bodybuilder, I studied how the bodybuilders maintain muscle mass. So by me immersing myself in these two different fields and looking at books like all the latest research on performance enhancement, how does it help our brain and help our hearts? I study uh, Dr. Noakes' book. I followed this for many years when he talked about high carb. Now he's talking about high fat. This is a 600 page book that dives into the, um, the lore of running that, that, that talks about every aspect and every uh, mile that you run as a marathon runner, what it does to your body. And me as a triathlete, I lost a lot of muscle mass, you know, doing this sport and didn't realize it until, um, four years into it that I needed to start running lab work and all my testosterone and growth hormone levels were in the toilet. And then this is the underground anabolic book that, that you know, obviously there's gonna, never gonna be a double blind study on this, but these, the people that use anabolics, the bodybuilders, the people that are out on the tip of the spear, we always gather and glean amazing information from these people. So again, we have to immerse ourselves in many different fields that don't talk to each other because if Elon Musk is thinking about going to Mars, we're gonna have muscle wasting. How do we prevent that? If a 60-year-old woman goes in the hospital with a broken hip, her muscles are a reservoir for fuel that's going to keep her healthy. How do we maintain muscle mass in 50 and 60-year-olds? What about kids that are obese and are losing muscle mass right now because their body is mining amino acids from their own muscle tissue when they go into level 4 REM sleep at night and they're not producing growth hormone? Well, we've got the answers. And um, that's sort of what I educate people on the Russ Scala YouTube channel or, or the American Biohacker, the book that I wrote. It's on Amazon right now. I help people take a deeper dive into this so you could ask tough questions. You're never, ever going to get this information from your doctor. Growth hormone is going to make another resurgence, and I think it's going to come back strong because it works. I've watched it work, folks. I use it myself as a, as a triathlete when I had to rehab my body. It done amazing things. Now, we're not talking about maintaining 40 pounds of muscle mass. You know, that, that could be the dark side of this stuff. Again, I'm not shooting anybody down. I learn from the endurance athletes. I learn from the marathon runners. I learned from the doctors that I spoke to all over the United States that I helped them understand the due proper dosing protocols. So let's walk through it real quick. Physical, mental, and emotional stress, chronic stress lowers our growth hormone levels, okay? Physical, mental, and emotional stress, think about that, folks. 
when your brain chemistry, when you're under stress, your intestinal tract are out of balance, growth hormone affects both these areas. In fact, people with irritable bowel and, and um, Crohn's disease have low growth hormone levels. So folks, if you're taking growth hormone and your body is not absorbing nutrients from your own meal or your amino acids, it's not gonna work. So these are some things we gotta think about. I worked in an imaging center where people were actually using growth hormone and I got to image there uh, using the iDEXA machine to look at body fat to muscle ratio. And that, that, that was a really telling sign that people, even on the standard American diet, because of growth hormone elevated something called hormone sensitive lipase, they were able to still lose body fat. Now we lean more towards a ketogenic diet, low dose growth hormone therapy and looking at multiple metabolic systems. We know that the mitochondria responds very well to growth hormone. We want the mitochondria in our most metabolically active tissue, our brain and our heart, to continue to grow and we want to continue to support our mitochondria with nutrition and hormonal support. The most highly metabolic tissue in the body has a lot of batteries to cre create ATP. Growth hormone is going to be important for brain injury. Growth hormone is going to be important for stroke patients and for dementia. It's all going to be part of a, a, a customized treatment protocol that traditional medicine is, is, is not going to wrap their arms around because they're still looking for that one drug like Lipitor you know, to make a billion dollars. And in reality, folks, what I want you to understand is when it comes to hormone replacement and nutrition, think about your brain, your intestinal tract, the mitochondria, how stress, physical, mental, and emotional stress, which we all have, lower all our hormonal levels. So we've got clients that are on hormonal therapy that are going through a divorce. We have to adjust their dosing. We have women and children that are overweight right now that are not losing weight on the ketogenic diet that are estrogen dominant. So these are some of the areas that I want you to consider, I want you to think about, because you guys that are watching me right now, there's a lot of life-saving things you could learn and you could ask your doctor these tough questions and get put on a therapy that works for you. And at, at the end of the day, we have 8,000 people a day turning 65. They're gonna need this information. I don't wanna see these people go on a cholesterol-lowering drug that's gonna lower the one thing that makes up all their hormone levels and cause them problems. Let's drill down together see me on um, the Russ Scala YouTube cha channel, Scala Precision Health, or, or the American Biohacker. Scala Precision Health specializes in cutting edge research, metabolic testing, and advanced imaging for the purpose of creating individually customized disease specific treatment protocols and performance enhancement solutions. Our research and development pushes innovative performance solutions into the hands of individuals, companies, physicians, and athletes.